I know at the start people thought we were completely mad and I look back at the photographs and I realise we were completely mad. It just was in such a dire state, it was hard to understand how you could possibly bring it back to life. I just had a vision for it immediately. I felt the house immediately and we really just wanted to bring Ormston back to be in a home. It was originally a home for a Scottish merchant. Then it passed to Harlan and Wolfe, the famous shipbuilders. And the most famous resident was Lord Perry, who was the man behind the Titanic. It has been a boarding school, it has been offices, it has been derelict. I think I had three principles I wanted to stick to. The first was to be as true to the house as I possibly could. So we wanted to restore this within an inch of its life. One of the first things we did was to restore the roof. This is an old Scottish baronial house and it has a very intricate roof system when it was derelict. The leaves had gathered in the large gullies and there was water ingress through the house. So the entire roof had to be stripped off. But we wanted to reuse and salvage all the original slate. So it was laid out in the lawns like tombstones. The entire job took a huge commercial team a year and a half and we managed to salvage 80 to 85% of the original tiles. Ornate ceilings began to collapse when we pulled out the dry rot. So again, uh, we found someone who was prepared to work with the ceilings in their current condition and to restore them by original methods. It was the same with the windows. We were advised that it would have been simpler to put in new wood framed windows with double glazing. We chose to take the dry rot frames out and to cut out the dry rot and to replace like for like in the existing frames. You have to leave the soul in an historic house and you take it out if you don't put back what was originally there as best as you possibly can. There were beautiful lights outside the house but all that was left when we came were just stumps. But we had photographs of Campbell College boys on the doorstep. We were able to see what the original lights looked like and we found an old style iron mongery where uh, the guy poured molten iron into sand casts and he was able to entirely recreate uh, the lights using the stumps that were there. Basically, we took the long route with every aspect of the house. The second thing for me was to make it a home. I wanted to settle here with my three children and my dog and my husband, and it had to be a home. You can't turn it into a museum. It isn't that purpose. We bought it with a view to restoring something and leaving something behind, but at the same time to enjoy our lives here. And the third was to have some fun with it. I just wanted to um, make it be something spectacular, which is what it was designed to be in the first place. One of the things I visualised from day one um, I had seen somewhere on Research Online a beautiful neon sign that says if these walls could talk and I very cheekily popped it right into the centre of the home in a very ornate and uh, beautiful historic part of the house because I feel that is exactly what this uh, house has stories to tell. Restoration is about really, really caring. It's about loving the property, it's about being passionate, it's about bringing back all that history before it's lost. We are only, in my eyes, custodians for our lifetime and after that I hope that we have restored this house for at least a further 150 years.